I'll say this also right here. I think this is, might be a world exclusive. I'll make this clear. My first file <coughs> is almost dead now because it's garbage. Do you all have a second file that they've been working on for a very long time? So when I first got out of jail, when the judge released us from house arrest, the judge read the file and said, this is stupid, and released us from house arrest. That day, a new file was started and new interviews with girls began. So Decal have a second file. So if I continue to win, they're going to hit me again. I should so this is your life, basically. Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah, they're going to continue to hit me. Am I ever going to get out of Romania? I don't know. But they've been interviewing girls for that. Now, the girls I know who have gone have all called me after saying these people are crazy. They were trying, they tried everything to get me to sign a victim paper and I wouldn't sign it. Those are the girls who told me after they left, but those are the girls I have good relationships with. Did a girl go who I have forgotten about and sign a paper saying she's a victim of, I don't know, being bought too many nice dinners and then, and then not call me after? And will I find out about that when they come and raid my house again and throw me back in a jail cell with the second file? Perhaps. Life is war. What can you do, my friend? I'm a 37 year old man. I'm also exceptionally handsome. I have ex-girlfriends, that's life. And at my at my echelon, they're gonna attack you via the females you know. And I'll argue here, there's not a single 37 year old man you can find on the planet that doesn't have a tough ex-girlfriend somewhere. So yeah, do I? Probably, so, so probably. Except like your exes. Well, no, yeah. the, the point is that that's why this attack vector is so deadly. That's why it's so effective. If they sit a woman down, again, hypothetical scenario, top T, one of his girlfriends gets called, goes to there, sits down, she calls him after and says, they were telling me that if I'm a victim, I get compensation from you when you're found guilty. If I'm a witness in your defense, I have to pay my own legal fees. And they were trying to tell me I need 100,000 euro to, to, to not be a victim, but I'll get paid money if I am a victim. Now that is a lie, but that's what the authority were telling these girls to try and get them to sign pieces of paper to try and destroy my life mm. in this second file, this imaginary second, a top tease, imaginary star. Mm. So, is that scary? Yeah. Do I have ex-girlfriends who are pissed off me? Probably. Have they been found by authorities and tracked down and pressured into signing pieces of paper saying they're victims of God knows what? Maybe. You can go deeper down the rabbit hole. What is human trafficking? I was interested to talk about this all the time. We're like, okay, so we're accused of human trafficking because they're saying that we told girls to post on TikTok at certain times. So we controlled them via the lover boy method, which means we controlled them via being nice. So we were nice to people and nicely asked them to nicely post on TikTok to steal the money from TikTok, right? That's human trafficking. How is any boss of any company not a human trafficker? Do you nicely ask your staff to do something at a particular time? Sometimes I not very nicely ask them to do something. Well, you're in a lot of trouble, sir. Because <laughs> do you do that for financial gain? Of course I Is do. that person a woman? Sometimes. Jail, you have a penis, she's a vagina, you influenced her and manipulated her. She has no sovereignty at all over her own decision. You trying no, to cancel me. Sir, yeah. you are a human. But this is the bull it's complete bullshit. Yeah. So then you sit there and go, okay, well, how did I manipulate her? Well, because you're a man and she's a woman. Well then you're a misogynist. Because you're saying women have no agency and can't make their own decisions. Why can't a woman say, I've decided I want to listen to this man as my boss and make money, or I've decided not to do as this man says. You're saying that women have no control over their own minds and every single thing a man says to them, they obey like slave robots. So you're a misogynist, you are calling women stupid. So why am I under attack for being a misogynist, for believing that a woman can work for a company and decide if she wants to do what she's supposed to do on time or not? How does it make me a misogynist? Are you f***ing angry? I am amused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm deeply amused. I am deeply amused by the state of this world. I think I'm, there's anger in there. Oh no, I'm an angry person mm. because anger is a fuel and that's how I get so much done. But I'm not angry in a negative sense. I actually think anger is a fantastic feeling to have. I would be worried about myself if I wasn't angry. I'm angry all the time, yes, but I was angry before all this garbage. But I'm just gen I'm genuinely amused at the state of the world where we're going to have this hypocritical frame of society where women are perpetual victims and everything a man does to them wasn't their fault. And every single decision they make was a man's fault at some point. Because five years ago, they had sex with a guy, which they now regret, which is the man's fault. It wasn't their decision. And they're victims who should be protected and believed in all regards. And if a man does anything to them, he's a human trafficker. At the same time, they're fierce and independent and they're equal to men. In fact, better than men in, in everything. And we've put these two frames together at, in the same society. And we're sitting here going, so if, if, 
The truth is, if a woman can't be trusted to make her own decisions, she should be listening to her father. I, I guess. But they're saying, no, women don't listen to their fathers. They're independent. They can do what they want. Okay, well, she's independent. She can do what she wants. She decided to become a star, like Mia Khalifa did. And then, when she regrets doing she starts doing videos saying, my manager tricked me. <laughs> That's what happened. If your manager could convince you to do was it she making hundreds of millions on OnlyFans? Oh, oh yeah, she's so, making hundreds of So did he trick her into that? Oh, of course he did. Yeah. So if your manager can trick you into having sex with 300 men for hundreds of millions of dollars over a period of six years, oops, then perhaps, then perhaps you should do as your dad says. But at the same time, you think you're too smart to listen to your father. Which one is it? Like, the society needs to make its mind up. The whole thing is a joke. And all of it is done on purpose. And it's all done on purpose to deliberately attack masculinity. It's not safe to be a man anymore. You can't be a man and have normal relations with women in any regard without it being used against you if they so wish. Every single man watching this podcast is guilty. You are all human traffickers. You're all manipulative. You're all controlling. You're all emotionally abusive. All of you can go to jail if you piss off the government enough. And they will find some girl who said, he emotionally coerced me because he wouldn't let me go drinking with a bunch of men and he, I felt controlled and she'll do a domestic violence report, even though you've never touched her, for controlling behavior. And they will drag you to a police interview and sit you down. They will then take your mobile phone. They will go through your phone and find every other girl you've ever spoken to. See if they can get some other statements against you. They'll also find the time you sold your t-shirt on eBay and didn't pay taxes. And you, sir, are going to jail. All of you are guilty. If you are a man, you are guilty of everything all of the time. And this is done on purpose because if you're a man like me who stands up and tells the truth, they already know you're guilty. So they're like, oh, okay, he's guilty of something. Teach him a lesson. You're living in a state of society as a man now where you're all permanently, your head's on the chopping block. And the only way you could not have the guillotine come down and take it off is to be quiet and meek, not to talk too much. Don't tell the truth. No. And that's the world we're living in now. And the crazy thing about it, Crazy, truly crazy. <laughs> this is the crazy thing. I'm getting cramped. I'm fucking no, the crazy crap. thing is this. I say all of this and 70% of people sit there and go, yeah, it's true. If you're a man, you're perfectly guilty and they, they keep it all over your head and they try and make you scared to tell the truth because they'll punish you. There are still 30% of people out there who believe this. Andrew Tate became the most famous, most Googled man in the world speaking against government and authority. But they didn't put him in jail for that. They put him in jail because of TikTok, because he's a human trafficker. There are people that stupid. And these people get to vote. These people are usually the ones they put on the news. These people run the liberal NGOs. These people are teachers. These people are lawyers. People are police officers. You want to talk about how messed up society is? Sit me down with the average police officer and let me talk to him for five minutes and I'll prove to you conclusively that they are stupid. All of them. And they're in charge of your life, these people. Give me the average primary school teacher on a Monday morning after she'd been drinking all weekend, sleeping with God knows who. And let's sit her down and see who's educating our children. Whole world's a mess. And these people will sit there and go, yeah, he's a human trafficker. I think he's a human trafficker because the BBC told me. Oh, the, B the BBC told you. Oh, well, it must be true. Clown world. Clown world. It is no longer safe to be a man on any level. So when you ask me, because I like to go back to previous points we made, I think it's nice to be cyclical. You ask me about the fact that am I afraid they're going to put a bullet in my head? They're going to put a bullet in our heads. Do you understand? At least I get to die first. At least they remember my name. If we all have to jump off the cliff, at least I get to go first. Wait, wait, lads. Well, Andrew Tate went first. Because we're all going to die. The only way to stay alive as a man now is to not be a man anymore. To be a chick. I'd be afraid because men are little cowards. Oh, don't kill me. No, okay. I refuse. I refuse absolutely. Just shoot me. Or put me back in jail. It's fine. I refuse. Until the day I'm going to drive my Ferrari around, I'm going to say whatever I want. That's what's going to happen. I don't, give, I don't care anymore. Put me in jail. Put me back in jail. I don't care. I worked out something that's actually very fantastic for everyone at home who's worried about going to jail. To all the men at home, because they're going to come for all of us if you have any kind of opinion or you tell your girlfriend not to sleep with other men, somehow that makes you controlling. If you go to jail, you can still smoke, which means there's nothing the government can really do to you that prevents you from getting cigarettes. So life's fun. Cigarettes is life, is it? 
I mean, cup of coffee, cigarette, push-ups. That's jail. That's life. That's all I do. I'm a billionaire. That's all I basically do. Train, smoke. Oh, my brother. Yeah. It's, it's the same. At least I'll be in the gulag with a pure heart and a pure soul. You know, I'll be in the gulag looking out the window at all these other men walking around in freedom and they'll feel sorry for me and I'll feel sorry for them. But no, because you're not free. Jail made me famous, yes, because I was prepared for it. Well, you'd already made yourself famous before jail. Had Co completely, but also if, if I had left jail mentally broken and financially broken, it wouldn't have made me more famous. So, and, and physically broken. Because all those three things could have happened. Please understand, I was in 24 hour a day lockdown. My cell was half the size of this room and I didn't leave. I didn't get a gym. I didn't come out looking all scrawny. I didn't get a good nutrition. I didn't get good food. I had, most people in there had mental health problems. If I would have come out there all skinny and mentally broken, then it would have been game over. Mm. So there's, there's also a degree of my competence in all things. But the people who laugh at me going to jail don't understand that there's no light without dark and I'm an expert, I guess, if you were to say one of my skills is, my, I'm an expert at being hard on myself and if life's gonna be hard on me, I'm gonna Aikido that into power. I would believe I'm a stronger version of myself post-jail. And if you put me back, I'll emerge stronger than ever before. Send me to jail. Fine. Send me to jail. <laughs> right now, I'll go. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight. Put me in handcuffs, send me to jail. The day you let me out, I'll be a stronger version of the day I went in. So what do I have to fear? Because if you truly want an exceptional life, this is one of the mistakes a lot of people make. They want an exceptional life, but they only want the exceptional good because they're cowards. They're like, I want a lot of money and fast cars. Cool. You don't want the exceptional stress. You want the exceptional car collection. You don't want the exceptional stress. You want to be me when I'm flying my Bugatti on an A380 and I'm in first class Emirates and my Bugatti is below me and I'm filming it for Take Confidential. You want that, but you don't want to be me when I'm in a Romanian dungeon. But there is no light though. If you want the exceptional good, you're going to have the exceptional bad. That is a law of the universe that can't be broken. That is not human law. That's universal law. Yes. So if you're sitting at home saying, I want an exceptional life, then you have to be prepared for both the good and the bad.